Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good, good. How are you doing? Doing fine. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, because I can't hear you, so it's oh. a different question if you want to hear me. <laughs> Still is at this time. I think it was only the last two weeks that got moved. Um. I think we're still supposed to. I know um, we wanted to start really getting just like, you know, stuff like uh, just just comments and, and, you know, tweaks here and there, at least for this initial V1 and then the idea was to allow folks to uh, quickly, we can work on like a V1.1 or whatever. And I'll have, oh. Hmm. I can hear, I can hear you fine, Michael. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can, I can hear you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm confused. Is this because this would be weird if Um, I'm also checking to see if, uh, <laughs> I inadvertently had myself muted there. Um, I, I think uh, I, I think some folks. Uh, I know there was something last week that we had pushed it back an hour. This week, I thought it went back to the normal time. Um, uh, actually, let me just double check here. So, We've Brendan's out. Uh, all right, was that? Oh, I was just saying, it looks like we've got more folks joining. So oh, yeah, yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah. hopefully we're in yeah, the right yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I know Priya's Pri is out. Uh, Brendan's out. Um, I, I wonder if uh, Andres might. Uh, well, so I know Andres is is on vac like on on leave, um, uh, paternity leave. But um, uh, I don't know. Um, well, either way, we can get started. <laughs> either way, we can get started. Um, and uh, if it needs to go two hours, it can go two hours, like, like the last couple of times, and because uh, I have the time, you know time to to do that. Uh, so um, I'll start off. Uh, I always get the spiel wrong, but uh, you know, just as a reminder, you know, the meeting is is recorded, uh, as well as uh, you know. Um, attending this meeting and participating, you are uh, abiding by, you know, you need to abide by the CNCS uh, code of conduct. All right, cool. 
Um, so there wasn't really anything um, too big from my end that I felt uh, any big topics from my end. So I'm going to mostly defer to, to the other folks on the call on anything they wanted to bring up. Um, last week, we went over uh, the diagrams. I added some additional diagrams. Um, Uh, I, I added some uh, additional diagrams. I added some uh, few things here and there, tweaked a, a couple of sentences here and there. Um, but besides that, uh, I think we're we're pretty much ready um, uh, for you know um, a sort of more of a broader community review, as well as I believe um, Andres has sent over the doc. Uh, earlier in the week over to the technical writers at the CNCF to start doing proofreading and, and you know, making sure that we're consistent and pointing out any areas that don't make sense, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, what topics have other, do other folks have? Oh, I added um, a diagram. <laughs> That was mainly for my understanding. I just wanted to clarify that. Does that make sense for admission controller in the document? Yep. I, I think it makes sense from what I saw, right? You know, okay. I think uh, that that's largely like, yeah, we're validating, you know, everything from identity to the actual dependencies and images and the, all these things. And like the idea is, um, you know, as long as you pa pass all of these policy uh, requirements, then your stuff goes into um, production, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that the output, where does it go is uh, a bit of a question mark, right? Because sometimes it can go into a code repo, right? There are multiple admission controllers, so that's what I do not know how to depict there. So. Okay, thank you. Oh, right. Actually, uh, uh, do you, do you want to um, introduce yourself? Uh, since I think you're new to the to the to this particular group, I know some of your teammates have been on here. Yeah, yeah. I, um, so I'm Vile. Uh, I've been around Kubernetes for for forever, and um, most recently been working on um, Knative. Um, and then, uh, and uh, most recently, I'm working with uh, Matt, Scott, Kim, and Dan over at uh, Chaincard. So I uh, just wanted to go ahead and say hi. I met Michael in person over in Cube Current, but uh, I don't think I met all of you all. So thanks for having me. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, just uh, as um, to catch you up real quick, um, you know. Uh, both Dan and Matt have provided a lot of input. A few other folks have provided, you know, a lot of input. We've been working on the sort of uh, reference architecture, which is sort of intended to build off of what we had as a um, best practices white paper. Those things, um, and so uh, the reference architecture is intended to actually be a, hey, what tools and how do you use those tools in what ways in order to get something that you can kind of say, hey, I believe we're building artifacts that. Um, to sort of use the terms that that salsa is really pushing is we believe uh, that they haven't been tampered with. We believe that they're authentic. Uh, we believe that they also have integrity. And you know, assuming those, you know, uh, uh, and at, at some level, right? And, and so we're uh, obviously focused around, you know, um, the cloud native piece on, you know, mostly. But uh, just to kind of give you the quick thing, um, John and Alex uh, posted some docs there. Uh, or I guess the one doc here. Um, I also post the meeting notes. And in fact, actually, I realized I forgot to post the meeting notes. Um, I will add the thing here for, um, uh, I will update, one second here. Um, I will update this so that we can start having, we can put down attendance and everything. Give me one second. Uh, so. Just swap out names here. Um, right. 
um, updates. All right, so feel free to uh, just add your name to the attendance list. And um, if there's anything else uh, you'd want to update or, or whatever else. All right. Um, okay. So other topics, because um, I know, once again, you know, we can uh, we could do this all to death. Uh, the the actual document itself. Um, I think largely it it is uh, in a good spot. There's some areas that are a little inconsistent, and I think Alex, you said you you had kind of done some stuff to clean up some of the emission controller stuff. Because I do agree. I think there was a few. We had the emission controller stuff in like three or four different places. And we were more or less saying the same thing in slightly different ways in those three or four places. Um, I took a look. It seems pretty good. Uh, I just want to, you know, at some point very soon, I'm going to do a full sort of read over the entire doc again and, and double check some of those pieces. Um, yeah. Uh, but Alex, did you want to talk anything about that piece? No, I mean, I think I, I basically said uh, what I needed to say in the in the chat. But basically, yeah, I looked at the um, actually right where where that uh, that new diagram came in. Um, that admission controller section, um, which is still I think kind of long, but um, but we I think I think this was one of those things where we had uh, for several weeks in a row we had we had rehashed this particular section and written like four different drafts of it in the same place. And so I tried to just pull those together into a consolidated form um, that, that incorporated all the, the ideas that we were trying to convey there. Um, so I think, I don't know that we need to go through it line by line in this meeting, but you know, if anybody wants to take a few minutes and read through that and make sure that it does in fact capture what we've been talking about, but I haven't in my in my consolidation, I didn't delete anything that really needs to be there or anything like that. That would be great, um, but that's that's where that is. Cool. So um, I did review that. Um, that looks great, Alex. Thank you. Uh, John or Gary. Do you have any other sort of big ticket items from the paper or anything other than, um, I know there's a lot of like little, <laughs> lot, lots of little comments people have been making, you know, replace uh, physical with human, replace manual with this, you know, like I, I think that that's just gonna keep popping in for until we're completely done. Um, but just wanted to see if there was any sort of uh, other big things that, that need to get addressed. I don't, I think so. Um, I was just taking a look at Appendix C, which I think is a really great reference. And it looks like uh, there's a comment about well, like whether or not we should include this. I think it, I think it would be good to include that uh, longer term in terms of like, hey, these are the set of practices or recommendations from the white paper um, or the best practices paper. How does the reference architecture as of today stack up against that, I, I think is uh, important. Because we made a lot of recommendations there. There's a lot of things that are not necessarily implemented in the reference architecture as opposed to they're more like policies for your enterprise or your organization to implement as opposed to like, hey, hey we're not going to implement these in the reference architecture. Um, and then the, the other part that this makes me wonder about is if we have a like a salsa level for the reference architecture or not. And is that something we want to include or or not? So, so that is my next uh, big topic uh, for the meeting. So, so um, we can talk about that uh, once. Uh, I want to get everybody else's feedback first. I was literally typing it down as on the agenda as, as you were saying it. Um, so, uh, but first, uh, Gary, do you have any other sort of questions, comments? 
Um, no, I'm, I'm stoked to see everything come together. It's been a while since I've <laughs> seen this initiative. So it's, it's really interesting and excited to see this, uh, this all coming together. Cool. All right. So there's two um, topics I want to bring up. Uh, one is the uh, reference implementation. Um, and we can get we can do that a little later in the meeting, uh, but I will post the link to it again in the, both here and the um, So once again, um, <laughs> recognize that the code is very, very, very gross. It was originally intended as a quick demo, and then people liked it enough. They're like, hey, can we make something real out of this? And so, uh, that's probably going to be uh, where we start off uh, with some of the sort of reference implementation, or sorry, the prototype implementation for what we're doing in the reference architecture. Can go into some details on that a little later. But the next steps are okay, so now that we have a good draft of this thing, we want to start working with folks in the community like Salsa um, to start to address the. Oh no, wait, one second. Sorry, my mouse uh, just died. Just need to plug it back in. <laughs> um, so uh, the 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 things that we want to do is work with the broader community to see how um, the reference architecture sort of lines up with some of the standards and the frameworks and the specifications that people have in the community. And a big one is uh, Salsa. So. Um, had a little bit of a discussion about that yesterday, gonna be sending a lot more emails about it. Uh, some of the folks on Salsa side kind of seemed really keen on working with, um, you know, the Python folks and working with um, some other open source communities to get some of that sort of stuff done around like, hey, can we get Python um, things in PyPy at like a Salsa level two or something like that, all of them, you know, and, and have that sort of thing. And one of the things that I, I still am also pushing is soon is can we also start to talk with them about, hey, what level salsa do you think this is? What sort of proof do you think we can put in here? What sorts of attestations do you think we can make? And, and how can we collaborate uh, so that we can start to show, you know, the, out, the artifacts that are outputs of the secure software factory are salsa level two or salsa level three or whatever. And I think that, you know, my cursory glance of the thing um, is I think we are like salsa level 2.5. You know, we are very close to salsa level three. Um, and in fact, actually, we even have some components of salsa level four, as long as your projects are doing the right thing. But I do want to work with the community on this um, to sort of uh, to, to figure that out and to work with, um, you know, them on any sort of issues we might have, like Salsa is still relatively new, the attestation spec, I believe we are releasing um, version two on Monday, oh, sorry, version 0 0.2 of uh, the, the attestation spec on Monday, um, as long as everything goes, goes as planned. But yeah, I think we want to make sure that, you know, um, so that's just one thing with, with the Salsa thing, but I think we're also curious as to how we can also integrate with other groups like um, the Cartographos working group for the CNCF so that we can start to guide lot we can start to guide people in saying, yeah, this is not, you know, the secure software factory is probably not a day one for an enterprise when they're switching when they're starting to look at cloud native and Kubernetes. Probably secure software factory is not a day one thing. It's maybe a day two, a day three, you know, further down the line sort of thing, because we recognize that it could be quite complicated. It requires you to have admission controller. It requires you to have a good idea of how you're managing identities and secrets. And it's, you know, you're, it also requires, you know, uh, everything, almost everything is code, right? You know, and, and also GitOps all over the place and so on and so forth. So just want to kind of... Um, throw some of those general things uh, that we've been talking with a few different groups on, um, but want to get other folks' thoughts. So um, one question I had is, Michael, do we need to do that in phase one or can we do it in phase two? Oh, no, yeah. So a lot of this, I believe, is um, probably a phase two sort of thing, but we but given uh, the only reason why I think some of it we want to start poking around now is a lot of teams and groups are starting to plan 2022. 
And so, yeah, we we do want to make sure that uh, uh, that at least we get on the radar, I guess, for for some of the the folks. That totally makes sense, yes. I think I agree with you, Michael, that um, my my cursory glance at, at what we've done so far, I think also is, is somewhere between two and three on the salsa scale. Um, and I think, um, I don't know, I mean, probably, you know, obviously we should we should consult with the salsa people, but I think that if we, you know, put this out and say, okay, so here's version one of this reference architecture. And we think that if you implement a reference, if you implement a secure software factory that follows these recommendations, you'll be at Salsa 2 out of the, out of the gate that, um, you know, and then in future work, we hope to attain higher levels or help you attain higher levels or whatever. Like, I think that's a reasonable statement that we could make somewhere in the, in the introduction of this document. Yeah. Um, and like, I will probably for various reasons have to, at least take a step back from some of it, just because I am a voting member of the steering committee, and I don't want there to be a conflict of of interest of like, oh yeah, the the other project I'm working on, it's salsa four, it's perfect, and I, I'm <laughs> I'm attesting to it. But but I do think uh, you know, um, it could be. I, I do think it's 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 uh, going to be very close to yeah salsa three, and especially with some changes and whatever, we could probably get it salsa three. Um, if actually, you know, the funny thing is if all the stuff to, was there today, we could easily get salsa four for things that are reproducible as long as you're using certain technologies, like, you know, certain things like, um, you know, if you're using build kit and you're using, you know, when you have reproducible build, uh, build pack, sorry, if you're using build packs and you're using reproducible builds, um, or NICs and reproducible builds and s- similar sorts of things like basil or whatever, Um, and you are using Spiffy Spire in the right ways. And I recognize that the Spiffy Spire stuff hasn't been integrated in all the tools yet, but assuming you were doing all those things, you would pretty much have Salsa 4 at that point. Um, But there's a few things obviously that that still need to be done uh, in the community to kind of get those features in the tools um, in order to, uh, yeah, done. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it looks like what the reason why a lot of folks aren't on the call is because once again, I guess because of Europe uh, ch- changing their time zone, I guess it was uh, part, I guess the meeting was still scheduled in Europe. It doesn't doesn't matter. I'm going to be on for a while. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to kind of throw that um, out there. Uh, the reference implementation right now, I believe is um, Salsa 2. Once again, it's just a demo. It's the demo that I showed off at KubeCon and a few other places, um, but that but that is uh, giving salsa level two level attestations um, out of chains. I, one thing, and I'm, this may be more of a concern for the salsa group than us, and maybe there's some feedback for us in it in terms of like there's a lot in this reference architecture, and it's like you said, it's complicated, and it might not even be day one starting point for for large enterprises like what sort of reflection does that put on salsa if we're like only level two we're like like two and a half like i don't it's kind of a step scale i don't know if we can claim two and a half we're like <laughs> we, yeah yeah and and maybe there's like phase three or four of <laughs> like we can go on forever of this in terms of like can we make it any easier to achieve salsa level two or more easy to understand like if we really want to get people to salsa level four like how much time and effort is reasonable to expect them to put into understanding that and the scope of this problem is it going to be you have to read the 100 pages combination of the you know the best practices guide and the reference architecture and read all of this code and yep. understand salsa and like like how do is there a separate effort around making it easier to consume yeah, so, so you bring up a good point. Let me actually add that as, um, oh, actually, you know what, just, let me just do the um, oh. All right. uh, Yeah, there is a big thing there around how do we make this easier to consume? Um, uh, so, 
the my my thing is yes that is definitely also a phase two thing there's a couple of things one is as we kind of mentioned before some of the features that allow us to do some of the things we've even described in the reference architecture some of those things like right like when we wrote them the feature was still being written right uh you know it is it, it, so uh when it comes to a lot of this stuff a lot you know especially um I'm going to say there's there's certain tech companies like your Googles and whatever that that have written a lot of this sort of stuff internally, and it's also a little bit um, you know when you have thousands of engineers working on on the problem you 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 can uh, you can solve it right you know or you can you can do what you need to do and so not once again like this is the sort of thing where when when you can sort of compile a lot of things from source um, you can do a lot of those things now um, when it comes to you know, hey, how do we get this to sort of somebody who's like, yeah, I don't have a thousand engineers who can work on this. I have two guys or, you know, two people. Um, how do you, uh, how do you do that? Um, and I think the thing there is um, we, so there's two things. One is we need to be able to, um, What's the word? Like we need to be able to do two things. First thing is we need to first acknowledge that it is a hard problem and we need to do more work to sort of make it easier and, and also to solve it in the first place. But once we, we do sort of say, hey, look, today, this is not the sort of thing that we just expect somebody to just be able to pick up. The same way that like, you know, in 2016, right? You know, Kubernetes was not the easiest thing to just sort of spin up and use and just kind of, and then use securely and yada, yada, right? It, it took a lot of effort. Um, you know, I think what was the, the, the thing that people keep using is, is, you know, how do we make it boring? You know, how do you make it boring? And um, it's going to take time. I think that's the, that's really the, the big uh, thing here. Now, with that said, I think we can do certain things with, um, the secure software factory. Uh, let me actually copy the whole thing here. The um, the actual uh, that GitHub. Um, so one of the things I want to be able to do is say, hey, look, from a prototype implementation perspective, we can show you what it looks like. Now, this is not going. To, this is not a one size fits all. You're gonna need to do a lot of effort on that. But just this is sort of where we're starting to push, um, and whatnot. Now, the thing that I think we also need to sort of, um, but while going through this, I think it really just comes back to, we really need to acknowledge that this is going to be a hard thing to, to begin with. Cause um, something that came out of supply chain security con, uh, one of the things we noticed in, especially in the Slack chat for it was lots of folks saying, this seems hard. You're telling me that I need to validate and sign everything and have these attestations and blah, blah, blah. I just, I just run a Jenkins. How do I just like, how do I have a plugin for my Jenkins? And you're like, so there's two things. One is we need to get people to recognize that there's going to be certain things that you just can't do anymore, right? Some of that is, you know, it's a different pattern, the same way that we've moved away from as much as possible. We moved away from like, you know, complete monoliths, right? We've deconstructed applications and whatever. Not everything has to be a microservice, but we've, you know, gotten more reasonable there. And we said, hey, look, you can't do these sorts of things anymore. It's just not going to work. Um, and then at the same time, how do we also still make it easier, right? Uh, I, I think those are the two things we need to kind of um, sort out. Yeah, and I think th that all makes sense. Um... Maybe one of my concerns to be a little more explicit is like, given the constituencies of this group and salsa, are do we is there a fine line we're walking between this being the reference architecture or implementation of a salsa supply chain, or is this the CNCF reference architecture, or does that matter? And like like does it end up being both, and does it send a, a signal or message on behalf of salsa that like? maybe salsa is too complicated or the standards are, are set too high for salsa that we don't want to like, we don't want to get involved in that. Or like, or like, do we need to separate these things in any way? And are is there, oh. is there any implicit like uh, 
assumptions made about the relationships there? Um, so I'll give, uh, well, so let me just give my two cents and then, then uh, I want to defer to other people. M my two cents is just, I think it is going to be a symbiotic relationship. I think um, we're helping push Salsa to be a bit more clear about some of the requirements um, and how we do that. And then I think Salsa is pushing on us to be a bit more aspirational. And I think just the, the other thing that should be clear about Salsa is we want to make sure that, that Salsa level four is clearly an aspirational goal. Very few people are going to be able to achieve it. And in many cases, you're probably not going to have Salsa across the board. You might have, for my crown jewels, that's Salsa four, right? You know, for our core, you know, like just as, as an example here, like, Maybe you work at a hedge fund, you know, oh, okay, our core logic on how we look at, you know, the markets is, is salsa level four, but our marketing website only needs to be salsa level two, right? Like we don't, you know, you, you can see that there might be a balance between those, those different things. And, and um, yeah, so I think it's going to be, uh, we're both going to be pushing on each other to, to, to figure this out but want to get other folks on this call's uh, thought on it. Yeah, I think that's that kind of fits with my sense too. Like my my impression of salsa is that um, the like like salsa level 4 to me sounds like this is critical infrastructure, this is national security level stuff. This is stuff that like probably your average everyday developer doesn't actually need to be trying to build salsa level four artifacts. This is like the stuff that we really want to make sure is airtight needs to be salsa level four. And so I think like, and, and I think maybe this is something that's worth calling out maybe even in, in what we're saying is that, you know, my impression is that somewhere around salsa levels two or three are probably the ranges in which the vast majority of like publicly released software needs to be targeting, um, you know, somewhere in that range anyway. Um, and that, you know, what we want is for people to improve the security because we currently have a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't fit any of these categories of salsa at all and it's wreaking havoc. Um, but what, you know, but we don't necessarily need to say, and now everyone needs to be salsa four because like, that's just unrealistic. And so we're probably trying to push people to say like somewhere in that two to three range is the target for most application stacks. Does that make sense? I think that makes a lot of sense. My only, uh, it's not even a concern, but thought is that there is so much code that starts off very much with the oh, hey, I'm going to start thing, and all of a sudden you realize that the entire company is depending on that kind of a thing, right? So as long as uh, being able to go ahead, or, or, or the one, I think it'd be super nice. Uh, I mean, obviously it's not exactly comparable, but like Perl used to have the taint flag, right? If you've ever used Perl and you're like, okay, well now I'm secure, <laughs> right? But it was like, you could at least get to a point where you could go ahead and start with the, you know, rolling the knuckles on the keyboard and you get a valid Perl program. And you're like, well, that was fun. And then eventually as, as, as it gets used. So as long as there's a pathway that, um, that allows you to grow with the salsa, if you will, so that you can go ahead and, for example, start with something like that. And, you know, obviously I'm super simplifying this, but, you know, by, by adding more uh, uh, check boxes and, and flags and everything else, you have a pathway where it isn't like, okay, well, now I gotta redo everything. That That's my only thought on that matter. Yeah, um, and, and that's uh, definitely what, one of our concerns with whatever we bring up as a, a prototype implementation or whatever. Um, I think the thing that we're even saying with some of the stuff, even with the, the reference architecture document, it's going to be a long journey before a lot of this really gets um, hearted and consolidated around. Um, you know, this isn't you know, the, the, the thing that's come up and in, in some conversations is this isn't like, oh, the ISO standard. This isn't the NIST standard for this thing. It's actually, we are the people sort of like driving the change in a lot of these areas. And we could be wrong. We, right, we, 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 and we, we, we are even acknowledging in the document that 
um, some of the stuff that we stayed in there might be out of date by the time it's been published because of how quickly things have been um, moving. But I, I agree with you on on the point though of of like once we do start consolidating around tooling and yada yada, that becomes much harder to that becomes a much harder decision to reverse because once you have folks like as an example like oh everybody installed uh, Tecton or everybody installed Jenkins X or everybody installed whatever. Um, and then you say, oh, maybe that wasn't the best decision. And everybody goes, well, you know, we, 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 we made that decision now. Um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting, uh, uh, challenge. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, so any other questions, comments on uh, like sort of the, the next steps? Feel free to also um, like, if, are there other next steps that people, um, uh, is, is there another thing that people want to, um, what was I going to say, like any other next steps that people wanted us to get involved with, other groups, other initiatives, um, those sorts of things? Only thinking of um, the confidential compute for the root of trust. I saw um, in the beginning of the software factory that we need to establish a clear root of trust. Um, not sure if we can leverage the confidential compute available from all the CSPs, right? Hardware rooted trust and um, just, the, just the software factory, should it be built in it? Confidential compute. I don't know. <laughs> Underlying yeah, infrastructure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I I do think that that's going to be probably um, another set of next steps. I think one of the things that we had sort of uh, briefly sort of discussed because of all the work in the TPM space and the confidential compute space and trusted execution environment space is that a lot of that sort of stuff is still being developed. And one of the problems I think we had was also um, a lot of the things today don't just don't work in containers yet. Um, there is effort to get like VTPM working better in containers and some of these other sorts of uh, uh, confidential compute sorts of things working inside of containers in a better way. Um, there's actually some work on the Spiffy Spire side that should get merged in in the coming weeks, um, but that would only work at the sort of Kubernetes node level. It wouldn't work for the workloads themselves. But yeah, th th that's still worth um, some additional conversations. And actually, I, I do think that we should be working with the other working groups that are focused on the hardware stuff to kind of figure some of that out. Um, I think today, the way we've sort of stated it right now is we've deferred to the best practices white paper around some of these things that do say you should um, you know, root your trust in hardware if possible right, for a lot of these things. Okay. Now, with all of that said, I think it would be really, really worthwhile if we are building out that reference implementation as an actual piece of code. I want us to sort of, you know, practice what we preach. Um, right. And if possible, like, you know, uh, enforce the same sorts of rules, maybe do something like, yeah, we have a key signing ceremony or whatever with you know, here's the reference implementation or prototype implementation, and we're following all the rules that we stated. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. I think one one other area I've seen, and this came to mind when you mentioned the like mandating use of specific tools. Um, you know, like you you have to use Jenkins or Tecton or, or something else. Is, um, some of the most prevalent tools are not open source. Like, I don't know how much of Jenkins is, is open source or how much of like um, the, I saw a, a tweet from uh, Miranda this week about something Artifactory was doing um, with, with some JFrog stuff for secure supply chain. Like it would, it would be interesting to get a little more I don't know if it's if it's outreach or at least like rationalize some of the really prevalent tools that are out there that are maybe not open source and like how do they connect in with this 
reference architecture from the CNCF group. And maybe that's outside the scope of what we should do, um, but it would be, I think it would be more useful if we could connect to like how people are doing things today, a lot of times with proprietary software. And maybe that could push some of those vendors towards more open source or at least compatibility with some of the open source stuff. Yeah. Um, I, 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 so uh, we have been having some chats on that front. Um, just a few of us just sort of uh, like, just, just, I'm trying to remember if there was any specific vendors as much as just, it was a big topic of conversation at KubeCon. Um, I will say that like a lot of vendors are kind of like, hey, we would love for, you know, salsa to become a bigger thing. Cause then we can say, you know, like an average vendor will say, oh yeah, we have the salsa, we have a salsa level two badge, right? You know, and so people kind of go say, ooh, nice. Um, and and the same way as well, right? Like, are they doing anything that we should know about that's really interesting that we should include? Um, obviously we're still running into some issues, right? With stuff like vendors want to, you know, we all have <laughs> vendors got to make money. So they are very much like saying, how much do we want to talk about what we're actually doing? Right. Because we don't want to, um, you know, say too much and get, uh, you know, and, and now it's just like our secret sauce is now just open source. Um, at the same time, you know, there's some frustration around certain vendors who are kind of like, we've run into some issues already uh, with some vendors kind of saying we're salsa like, or we follow similar things like the CNCF best practices white paper. And we're like, yeah, but, but, but are you actually following it? Or are you just, yeah, we're, we're following something like it. And you're like, so, so, so that just means you're not following it. And, and you're kind of, you either took what we did and forked it and kind of doing your own thing and trying to make it more proprietary, which fine, you're you're able to do that, but recognize that a lot of other people are, you know, if the community goes this way, you're going to be stuck. Yeah, and I think um, it brings another interesting perspective, and and I don't know the company representation of everyone here, but I think if I can generalize, and and, and maybe I'm not right, it's like we've had more participation from a lot of the large platform providers. You know, the, I mean, rather than security companies or the smaller vendors that are like actively developing technology in this space, and it, it may be influencing the perspective that we offer. Um, and I think that's another good reason to involve more people. Yeah, and and so a thing I had heard, and this is another thing, which is once again, I don't want to get too deep into rumor and speculation. But I did hear some gossip that there are vendors who seem to be very interested in seeing us publish this thing and then them saying, oh, we follow the CNCF, you know, ref arc. But I think a lot of vendors are just, you know, I get it. I used to work at a vendor, you know, um, they often, a lot of vendors do not want to work with open source because they have enough things going on and they're just like, we would much rather just consume it, not contribute back. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, but uh, I do, we, as much as we can, I think we should work with vendors who do want to work with us. Um, and, and we do want to, you know, have reach out to, uh, to vendors um, uh, around this. Now, now, with a lot of that said, uh, I think, uh, I don't know about everybody else, where, where exactly everybody else works at, but I know a lot of folks on this call are working at vendors, just maybe very large vendors who do have broad open source, um, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, orgs under it. Uh, I, I, I'm working for an end user. So um, <laughs> that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for indulging me at least. I, it, this fits into the category of aspirational as the same as salsa level four of like things that we could do that if we had all the time in the world and. Yeah, and, and I think, um, you know, it's one of those things as well when it like, we wanna make sure that we're, we're also clear when I can't, you know, and this is something that we, we made sure it was clear in a lot of this is that if there is a tool that is listed in the ref arc, if there is a thing, it's just because the authors of the ref arc we're familiar with it. It's not, 
or it's specifically because it matches the CNCF's policies around, hey, look, if there's a CNCF tool that does this thing, we should be pushing, obviously, that CNCF tool, um, unless it lacks the, the features that, that are required for whatever we're talking about. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's we want to make sure that it's also clear that you know there's nothing nothing in there is left out specifically because ooh we hate that tool. It's like, well, one is we're an open source thing. We're not going to specifically call out vendors and be like ooh this vendor is great. Um, and at the same time, it might just be because you know the people who contributed the most to the paper just weren't familiar with those tools. And if somebody else comes in and says, oh, I would write up a whole blurb about this other tool go ahead for the next version or whatever. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and I think that the other encouraging part is the, the idea that a vendor would prefer to reference the reference architecture and say, hey, we're in compliance with this rather than shoot it down and say, hey, we don't know who these people are. We completely disagree with everything they've proposed and you shouldn't listen to them. Here's our proprietary solution that is better than what they've proposed. So, so like hearing that they're trending the opposite way is is good. And I'm, I mean, we can't make everybody happy and not everyone will agree with us, but um, that idea of consensus, I think is important. Yeah. And, and I'm sure there's going to be some big vendors that will most likely just say, well, we've locked you into our walled garden. So you have to apply our best practices or go find another vendor. Um, I'm sure that's also going to happen. That's just what we have to deal with. But yeah, the more folks we can get involved, the better. <laughs> I do think we've made a little bit of space for this in the way we've structured the paper too, where we have we have like a, a prototype implementation that is built entirely around open source tooling, basically. But then we go into sort of a theoretical description of what a secure software factory looks like. And there's nothing about that theoretical description that would preclude you from building your own proprietary tools that did all of those things if you really wanted to, as a vendor, do all of that in-house, right? So, so I think like we've, we sort of have like given you two paths forward, right? Like here's a model, if you're in the open source world or you wanna do all of your stuff with open source tools, here's a great way to do it because we've built it out and you can just kind of follow along with the way that this has been built. Right. And then, but if you really are not going to do that, you can like, here's the theory and you can build it yourself. Yep. Yeah. And, and I think that's uh, um, actually, it's something that that was already brought up with some of the, the, um, the, the secure software factory SSF stuff, it, it does look like somebody from white source is poking around with some of the reference implementation code we've written and saying like, hey, how can we start to adopt some of these things? And how can we, you know, yada, yada. And it's like, and I think, the, you know, um, that person even uh, mentioned that uh, they want to like do this the hard way, right? They, they, they don't just want something that just, um, you know, because they, they're going to, you know, they recognize just as well as everybody else that people are going to have a diverse set of tools that they're going to use. They just need to know what, what are the features that they need in those tools and how do those tools need to be sort of tied together to get that reference architecture. And I think we do a pretty good job at saying, hey, this is what the reference architecture requires. And here are the tools in the open source space that we believe to be the closest to hitting all of those marks. Um, any other questions, comments, anything else on that front? If not, I did want to quickly shift uh, to some of the demo stuff just to, um, as there's not the demo, the, the, the secure software factory code. Um, once again, the, the code here at some point, uh, the idea is to go through all the correct CNCF um, best practices. Uh, sorry, the, all the correct CNCF bureaucracy practices in order to get this potentially included as an actual project in the CNCF or as a repo under the CNCF. There's a lot of paperwork that needs to get done for that. So that's why we have it here for now. Because um, otherwise, we would just have to be stuck just not being able to do anything. Um, and I wanted it. Uh, off of my personal uh, repo because I just didn't want it to seem like, oh, this is Mike's 
you know, we didn't want it to just seem like, this, oh, this is just what Mike is doing on the side. And it's like, no, 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 this is what a bunch of us are all doing um, and, and working on. Uh, just a couple of things here is this is very obviously intended for just purely a demo, right? I have some stuff in here. It's all, it's all just intended for the demo. We are uh, in the next day or two, we plan on restructuring it all so that it's more like this is what needs to get installed. And then um, uh, this is what, uh, and then th like under like something like a demo folder or an examples folder are the things you can run to show it off. Um, and then we're looking at, you know, potentially a lot of just different tools and technologies. Obviously, we're, we're you know, um, since right now it's just all of us working on it, like the more the merrier. Um, I have a bunch of issues in here. Uh, the biggest one that we're working on right now uh, is, is sort of this re-architecture piece, which is just how do we just create a very simple baseline, um, like where we are in, you know, instead of having the scripts all over the place, we have the scripts in all one place. We have the installation in all one place. If we're using Helm, we have the Helm charts in a consistent sort of Helm charts uh, set up and that we have the mechanisms right where, hey, if you're doing stuff with, for example, we are using Tecton for the reference implementation and we're using chains, you know, uh, if you want to include a new pipeline, hey, here is the structure for what that looks like so that you could just sort of easily um, you know, sort all that out. So we're looking at tools also like Q and some other things to kind of get all of that stuff organized. We are very much, um, you know, since this is all part of this, the same group, we're very much, you know, feel free to open up issues, feel free to test it out, feel free to, you know, help out, open up PRs and so on. The thing that we are like right now still trying to figure out because we are trying to dog food our stuff is that idea around like, governance and how do we do governance and and how do we set up the github repo such that we are trying to be as close to salsa 4 as possible for this software factory itself right because we want to say hey i don't want like i am making sure that everything goes through a two person code review right even though technically i'm an admin on this thing i don't want to like but i want to have and to be clear i i haven't used github too much recently um, to know how to enforce all these things. I'm working with a few folks on that, but to make sure that we are following all the best practices, all the rules and yada, yada, right? Because we want to make sure that this is something that we can point to folks and say, hey, the supply chain of the secure supply chain thing is secure, right? We don't want to end up in a situation where it's like, oh, we the, the secure software factory, like the canonical example of this thing got supply chain attacked and um, now we all look like idiots, right? Like we, we don't want that. <laughs> Any questions, thoughts? Uh... What would be the most helpful way for people to jump in on this who are not already working on um, this project? I think the most helpful thing, and this is where it, it is kind of a, a uh, it's one of those catch 22s is like, um, I'm going to say, uh, if you wanna jump in and you have the time to jump in today, start working inside of the, the actual like read through sort of how we run the demo and start poking around with the demo. Tell us what doesn't work, what works well, what doesn't work, so on. Um, if you're like, hey, if you can wait a week, um, in the next couple of days, we are restructuring the repo such that it should look like a normal thing where we're going to have more of like an automated test. So it's like, hey, you run this make file, you run something like make setup or whatever, or make dev. And you know we'll ins we'll automatically install like this is how a lot of this works today, right? You install a mini cube, you install a tecton, you install change, you install spire. Those spire actually isn't required right now, at least. You install Kyverno, you install Gatekeeper, and those things combined then allow you to run this sort of demo here, where this demo um, pushes out some uh, uh, 
uh, Helm charts that are like the configuration for the tools it, that, you know, it, it pushes out our policy as code stuff. It pushes out a, an example pipeline and so on and so forth. Um, but some of that sort of stuff is going to be refactored really quickly because we recognize that it's just not like we've conflated a few pieces for the demo and we're going to kind of make it uh, harder. But like, I think the, the big things are poke around with the demo, look through the GitHub issues, and start, you know, if there are things that you think are missing from there, feel free to add new tickets if you or new issues. If you think that you, you know, you want to take a particular thing, feel free to kind of say, hey, can, can I take this? Um, if you run into bugs, feel free to add bug tickets. If you find um, interesting things that you think, uh, you, you know, you want to just have a discussion on, feel free to say, hey, look, like for example, governance, right? If you think you have a good idea of like how we should baseline our governance, or if, you, if you're familiar with how CNCF does its governance, then, you know, like feel free to add thoughts and comments in, in, in there. But if, if the idea is, hey, you want something a little bit more hard, like, hey, is there a specific ticket or something like that? I would say wait probably about a week. We'll have a little bit more. Um, we'll have swapped around a lot of the stuff. We'll have it in a reasonable spot. And most likely the next steps starting next week are going to be, we want folks to use the thing, test out it, it via demos. We also um, are starting to talk to folks like Google who have offered um, potentially a, uh, a, a, uh, uh, like an actual Kubernetes cluster that we could test this stuff out on, um, like an actual, you know, some GCP compute for automated tests. I know that some of the stuff we might be able to run via GitHub Actions, but I am a little worried about how much GitHub Actions can support if we're running GitHub Actions that installs a local Kubernetes cluster, whether it's Kind or Minikube or whatever, and then these 12 other large, you know, we're installing chains, we're installing all these things. I'm just a little worried of like, Will it take a really long time? Is it going to cause issues? Yada, yada. Um, but I think the, the next steps starting next week are going to be a lot of like, how do we start writing up tests for this thing? And then we can go back and start adding additional features, start tying things together. Because I think the big thing is going to be, hey, I spun this all up. I don't know how it works. And the tests slash examples slash demos are going to be the good way of showing how, how it works. And also making sure that if, we make a change, which we're running into now, and I know is a big issue with infra as code stuff, is every time I make a change, I'm testing it locally. And then my person on an M1, you know, my, my, my colleague on an M1 Mac is saying, it doesn't work for me. And then we discover, oh, there's a weird quirk with M1 Max with this thing and that. Thing. Uh. <laughs> anyway, that, 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 those are the things I think are going to be, we're going to probably start starting next week. Did that answer your question, Alex? Yeah, that's that's very helpful. Sounds great. Cool. Well, I am going to prep for the next uh, the next hour because I think um, because of the time zone shift, some people are uh, joining in a few minutes later. Um, Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.
Hi, Marina. How's it going? Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm going to give it a, another couple minutes for some folks to join. Um, this is the first or second meeting of the day. Yeah, this is the second one uh, uh, again. Oh. Uh, uh, it, it, it's OK. Uh, I think it's between it getting rescheduled the past two weeks for like because of some conflicts with some, some people had, and then the Europe switching their clocks oh, right, right. Um, a week before we do. Some people, it was a lot of confusion, but I think we're, we're at a good, yeah. I think the CNCF calendar was updated because I have it at 12 o'clock for next week as well, after the time switch. So oh. it needs to be fixed. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll, we'll, we'll poke whoever, um, it is on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk to somebody to make sure it gets <laughs> figured out for next week. Uh, I get okay. I guess we can get started. I'm sure other folks will will. Um, uh, hop on as, as they need. Uh, so just as a reminder, this meeting is uh, being recorded and will be uploaded to uh, YouTube shortly after this. Um, and then um, your participation in this meeting means you are uh, agreeing to the CNCF uh, code of conduct. Uh, cool. Um, all right, so uh, let me share um, a couple of things. One is let me share the document uh the the um the working group notes document that's what i just shared right now and then i'm going to share the cncf uh, sorry our software factory um document uh cool uh, okay so um we talked about a few topics in the last half meeting thing um Feel free to add your name to the attendance, add anything that you want in the discussion or any other updates, anything that, that you think that uh, needs to be uh, added in there. Um, but first, before kind of getting into um, general updates, does anybody want to um, introduce themselves if they're, they're new to the Sure. Yeah, I, I joined Dallas. Like Sorry, um, I'm, I guess, kind of new. I've been in a couple of meetings before, just not this one. I'm working at Plume. We do uh, Wi-Fi routers for um, a lot of companies, like um, Comcast and some things like that. So we're looking into supply chain security for our devices. Cool. <laughs> Next, uh, I'm Michael. Um, Work as SRE at Red Hat. I'm um, just interested in the topic. Awesome. All right, cool. Uh, so, um, okay. Axel is joined. 
Cool. Uh, so we can get started here. Um, I guess so. So for the folks who are new, just so so you're aware of like where we're at. Um, you know, previously we had released a best practices white paper. Um, I believe this was back in May, around that time frame, April May time frame, um, around KubeCon Europe. Uh, and then after that, we started building out a uh, secure software factory reference architecture. So we, we're, what we're calling the secure software factory is just essentially what tools and, and you know, CI tools plus security tools, all of those sorts of things combined, um, do we feel can help uh, us better secure our supply chains for artifacts we're building? And so we built out a reference architecture. That reference architecture is at least the V1 of the paper is um, more or less done at this point. And let me just make sure that I just post it again in case anybody missed it in the chat. Um, so this is the stuff there. Um, uh, so what the uh, the reference architecture is, is sort of a, a large description of, you know, how do you approach the problem um, from a tools perspective, what do what features do the tools need? Um, how do those tools need to be configured and working together with each other? Um, and how does all of that sort of come together? And why does that produce um, you know artifacts that we believe are uh, safer, right? You know, have higher level of integrity, have a you know we can prove authenticity and and those sorts of things. So uh, that's the part of the the reference architecture, and so that thing um, as of this week is more or less um, done from a draft perspective. We are reaching out to the community for uh, additional comments from the community. Uh, we are also sending this over to our CNCF uh, technical writers to help clean it up uh, and, you know, um, do a little bit of work on, you know, making certain the way we say certain things a little bit more consistent and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then one of the things that that's also part of this, uh, which is sort of a next step, is sort of the reference implementation or the prototype implementation, which is based off of um, some demo code uh, my my team and I had written, and that we're now uh, looking to uh, get as part of the official um, CNCF. It will eventually um, be pulled into the CNCF uh, once we go through some bureaucratic sort of processes to get it uh, officially adopted. But for now, this is you know it's it's living there. To be clear, it's very much demo code that we are rewriting to become an actual thing, um, but just throwing that uh, out there. Um, uh, for any of the new folks, are there any sort of questions on that front? Any comments, questions? Is, is that uh, reference document mostly all around Kubernetes? Yeah, so it is um, cloud native. Uh, at this point. So most of the stuff there is, is around the cloud native space. Now there are discussion around stuff like, Hey, like from an internet things perspective or from, you know, a hardware perspective, where else does this fit in? At least for the V1 document, we have been pushing on uh, like mostly focused around the sort of cloud native stuff. So, you know, Kubernetes containers, um, uh, you know, service mesh, those sorts of things. Now, with that said, uh, like another thing is, you know, we didn't have previously, you know, anybody who was very well aware of, of hardware and stuff related to that. So we, a lot of the document just didn't really get into that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been reading up on um, some of the issues with the uh, attaching the provenance information to like the artifacts and it sounds like there's like two different um, options. The one that Dan was suggesting to what the cosine was doing. And we're, I was just trying to figure out, um, is that you're, you've uh, looked at using the cosine flow, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's what we're doing. So right now, so for the way that we've been doing stuff with in um, real quickly, it, the reference architecture does say, hey, look, um, even if you're not using containers, if you have access to OCI, it is very easy for you to push artifacts into OCI itself, sign those artifacts, provide attestations in those artifacts that they live along the actual thing in OCI. So you could have you know, an arbitrary blob, it could be, uh, 
you know, whatever it is, it could be a tar ball, it could be an executable, it doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. And then you could have a signature that refers to that executable or whatever inside of OCI. You could also have attestations that are all in there and you could use OCI to kind of uh, hold on to that. And so in the reference implementation in particular, we're doing a lot of that, um, you know, uh, outside of the scope of this meeting, but I, I do have some examples of, hey, I have a, a a what's referred to as a bundle, and that bundle has um, literally the entire list of transitive dependencies for a particular thing that I want to run. I could just run it on any Linux machine. It doesn't have to have anything on it other than I think like a shell and a couple other things. Um, and it will just sort of expand out and it will validate signatures. It'll do all that good stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, so if we had feedback on the document, how would you want us to submit that? Um, just uh, there should be comments going out. If, 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 there's, if it hasn't been opened up to comments to everybody, I believe that might be happening after an email gets sent out, I think either later this week or early next week. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to take up the whole meeting with some questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no problem. Um, cool. Uh, okay, so now we can kind of uh, switch to the next thing, which is just for for the other folks um, who've been uh, working on on this. Uh, with, uh, are there any updates? Any questions? Concerns? I know we're kind of like been more or less tying it up, tying up the last few uh, things for. The secure software factory outside of opening it up to to other folks to comment on uh but um uh, anybody else have any sort of big things that, that either they they updated and they want folks to review or or any other things that that, that uh, they want to talk about on that front Axel, Marina, Aditya. I don't think I have any particular updates. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, me neither. No, me neither. I think the 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 um, reference architecture is moving forward and it's nearly there. I think that was really the big thing. So we're going to have to sort of all reconvene to figure out what's the next big step. Is my understanding. Um, yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. So, uh, okay. So for, so the, the next topic that I wanted to just talk about was, um, uh, get folks thoughts on next steps. So once we sort of release this as a V1, um, I think as we kind of all had sort of discussed previous in previous meetings that we recognize that even the V1 is going to be out of date by the time we publish it because of how quickly, um, the supply chain security space is, is moving. You know, I, I know with some of the stuff like for example, um, when we were writing this, like the notary V2 stuff was still being, you know, um, thought out. And now there's a, like a, a, an alpha for it. And a lot of the things when it came to, you know, oh, this thing doesn't exist in chains. Uh, you know, as of last week, some of those features have now been added to chains um, and, and so on. Uh, so I think that there's some uh, next steps regarding making it a... Um, making it a, a reference doc. Um, and, and so on. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, making it a, uh, sorry, a living doc. Um, and so that we can update it as time goes on. So we can do something, I think uh, one thing, you know, once we're done with the V1, we should probably have the dis a broader discussion, but just want to get folks thoughts on what do people think about taking kind of that, that salsa approach of like, oh, we have a V1 of the document. We could have a V1.1 two months later, and that's okay because of the, the, the nature of the space. We recognize, as long as we were clear to everybody who is looking at this thing, that, hey, look, this isn't well, um, the supply chain security space isn't a very mature space. And a lot of these tools, a lot of the patterns, they are still being developed as we're writing the best practices for them. Um, but just wanted to, to get uh, folks' thoughts on that. Yeah, that was my question earlier about the cosine and the notary. Um, 
I guess I haven't dived into all the issues there, but there seems to be a little bit of difference of opinion on some of that stuff. So um, I was just trying to figure out where that was going. So I don't have an opinion on either one. So <laughs> I, I think that there's, there's still some possibilities. That. They're, they're going in different directions, but I think there's still some possibility for conversion or at least compatibility between those. So as I think they figure that out, we can then iterate on the, the best practices here. Um, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I generally agree. I think that this is a fast moving space. And so we really want to make sure that um, to keep this document relevant, I think we'll have to update it pretty frequently. So. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And going, going back to what you were saying, Michael, about, you know, the tools are moving very fast, but in a way, I mean, this is where I think we should take a leaf from good regulation or good laws about technology. Bad laws about technologies try to talk about specific technologies and then are inevitably out of date, you know, 10 minutes after they've been published. Um, good laws about technology talks about talk about principles and talk about what we want to achieve. And I think it's the same idea here. We're talking and we want to talk more about, you know, general principles and general, you know, sort of building blocks we want to we want to have to guarantee certain um, properties versus specific tools. The tools may change. And as you were saying, you know, chains doesn't do something one week and then it does it the next week. So what we want is more that that property and we want to get that across versus you know saying oh use version x of y because you know it does it it's, yeah oh yeah 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 so i i totally agree with that um and in fact i think we've done a pretty good job in the document of going through some of those things and and by that i meant actually i was kind of more talking the the prototype implementation of the thing but yeah to your point um uh Yes, we, we are trying to talk about um, more about how you do things like certain things like, hey, we expect things to be signed and to be attested and yada, yada. Now, the exact model for how they do that, we're a little bit more flexible about as long as it follows the good, you know, as long as it follows the right principles and so on. Yeah, no, agreed. I mean, I, that, was, that was clearly the intent from the start. I mean, at least for since I've since I've been following it. Yep. Yeah, and and so for for Alan and and some of the other newer folks, just so that they recognize, like, yeah, like the the reference architecture might refer to certain tools, um, but throughout the architecture, we do say, hey, we are trying to take a tool agnostic approach. We are trying, and and one of the things that is uh, does complicate that is just the nature of some of the things that we're doing. There might only be like one tool that currently follows those practices. So it is, as an example, there's really not a whole lot out there that provides, um, you know, uh, uh, identities the same way that a, like a spiffy spire does. Um, and so that's kind of why we've like, eh, it's more or less we took what they're doing from their model and said, hey, this seems like a really good practice. If more things take that model, yeah, you can just, you know, you can do that sort of thing. But, you know, we, we're not really necessarily tying to any specific tool, at least as far as the um, reference architecture is concerned. There is something which I'll talk about a little later, which is what we're calling like the prototype implementation or the reference implementation, where we are taking, um, I don't want, I don't want to say we're not, we're not necessarily making a, a lot of opinions, uh, taking, a, uh, we're not being we are being opinionated based on our document and we are taking certain things based on just from the group, who knows what tools best and how can we tie it together today to show off, this is what this could look like. And this is like, you know, if you run um, a pipeline in this thing, we would expect you to get, uh, you know, something like a salsa level two attestation out of that, you know, out of that, um, out of that reference implementation pipeline. Yeah, and that's um, from our device side, the Spire model, um, we have X509 certificates for device identity, but linking in Spire is a complicated piece that I you know, have to kind of give, it, give it everybody up to speed on. And it really only, probably solves a little bit of our problems, um, but I'd like to use the salsa framework, um, but maybe not replace everything if possible. 
So yeah, it, um, putting Spire in there is, yeah, I'm trying to think, figure out how to do that, but not use it for everything. So, so I will say that there's going to be, um, you know, one of the things that, that, that uh, was also something that came up in the previous discussion was, um, so next steps is we do want to make this easier to consume and want to get obviously folks thoughts on how to make this easier to consume. But at least for the time being, we are recognizing that the supply chain security space is very much evolving and it isn't easy to do. Uh, the One of the things I've seen people talk about a lot is like, you know, I keep hearing people say, how do we make Kubernetes boring, right? Because that, that's <laughs> that's a, you know, a key principle is like, hey, once it's boring, then it just, you know, everything just sort of comes together because it just becomes, oh yeah, I just do this. This is just another one of these and, and, and becomes much easier to kind of manage. I think the supply chain security space is not boring yet. You know, it, it is mm -hmm. going to take a lot um, to do. And also to some extent, we recognize that maybe not everybody can just sort of get it out of, you know, it's going to take a lot of time and effort. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not the sort of thing that you can just sort of buy a vendor tool off the shelf and just be like, cool, we, you know, we have supply chain security now. It's like, no, it's going to require a lot of, at least right now, a lot of custom work on individual companies based on their needs and so on and so forth. Down the line, yeah, it might be boring. It might be something that, you know, we just point to, you know, an open source tool, a vendor product or whatever, and say, yep, that thing can, can, can uh, build tools, you know, can build your, uh, your software securely. Got it. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. That sort of makes, quite rather makes me laugh coming from a company who is specializing in making open source boring. So I think it's very good. Um, so a couple of next steps that I wanted to go over um, was one is, and want to get other folks' thoughts on this, uh, feel free to add your, you know, attend, once again, feel free to add your attendance to the, to the Google Doc or whatever else, um, any other feedback you might have. The, the things for next steps are beyond, obviously, we are reaching out to the community for, um, for, for comment, we are reaching out to the uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be um, publishing this this uh, white paper soon after, you know, we finish up some tight, you know, going through typos and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the next steps are we do want to start collaborating with other groups so that when it comes to these things, right, we can point to industry standards, industry uh, frameworks and say, hey, we follow this thing. As an example, also, um, we would love to be able to point to salsa and say hey are if you go through this thing you are salsa level two or you're salsa level three um and for those who aren't aware because i'm not sure uh michael or alan if you're familiar with with salsa but salsa is the the new framework that's coming out of the open ssf and originally sort of put out there by google as a way to sort of say hey here are some properties or here are some things that you should be doing inside of your supply chain when building an artifact in order to kind of validate that it hasn't been tampered with or that, you know, you know, yes, the code that we expected to be compiled is the code that actually got compiled. And we don't have like a solar wind type thing where, hey, I thought I was compiling this code, but right as I was compiling it, the build tool went in and, you know, messed with it, right? We don't want, uh, you know, so how, you know, what, what can we show with, with this reference architecture? And so um, myself, uh, you know, uh, for the new folks, uh, for transparency, I'm on the, the steering committee for Salsa, but we have been talking with Salsa for a little while um, on how can we show off like, you know, this, this CNCF tool, or sorry, the reference architecture, and then eventually the reference implementation. How can we show these things off? And what sorts of attestations can we make about it so that we can show, you know, yep, this sort of thing secures it this way, which means these are the things that that you'll need to be concerned about. But for the group, um, are there other things that you think that, you know, other standards that we should be, you know, getting involved with? Are there other groups we should start talking with? Are there other um, people we should be talking to about these sorts of things?
I think you had mentioned it, or there's Alan that brought it up, was as very Kubernetes uh, focused. I know there's some some movement towards like you know not even any containers so you know there's like serverless frameworks um like open fast especially like those i iot devices i'm not i'm not familiar with uh, enough with the landscape to suggest like a group yeah so on that front um, what I will say, uh, there's nothing in here that specifically says we can only build containers. Um, what we are saying here is actually just that uh, what we are describing is something that as long as you're building in a Kubernetes environment, yeah, it should work. So if you have an artifact that is a serverless artifact, that's fine. Um, the secure software factory should be able to build those things. Uh, we are just kind of a little bit more focused on some of the container space. And as time goes on, yeah, if, if folks want to kind of, um, uh, for like a V1.1 or 1.2 of this, this document, if folks want to kind of describe out, uh, you know, here's how this might work for a little bit more clearly for internet of things, devices, network devices, hardware, whatever more than, more than um, welcome to kind of, uh, you know, we can add additional addendums and, you know, whatever to there um, in, in a 1.1, 1.2 or whatever. But the, the main thing here is, is um, what I would say is actually that we're focused on cloud native in two ways. You know, the first way is just like, obviously for the output artifacts, we're focused on, you know, cloud native things. Like we're not so focused on just as an example, like j 2 E, right? You could still do j 2 E inside of this environment as long as you're following the right patterns and practices. But we are saying, hey, look, if you're kind of using, you know, modern tooling, it makes this sort of thing a lot easier. But secondarily, we're saying, hey, when you are building this secure software factory, that we are saying, we are expecting that secure software factory to be running Kubernetes. We're expecting that secure software factory to be using cloud native, um, uh, especially those tools that are falling under the CNCF, right? You know, you're using those sorts of projects. So you're using, you know, um, and, and especially open source projects. So you're using, all, you know, the CICD tools that fall under stuff like the Linux foundation, like uh, as an example, Tekton is a CD foundation um, tool, which we're, we all fall under the umbrella of the Linux foundation. Um, you know, we're using Kubernetes, right, to, to orchestrate a lot of these things than necessarily saying you have long running servers. There's lots of practical reasons for that as well. But like, that's kind of the approach we're taking as well, which is like, from the actual reference architecture, we're not going to tell you how to, you know, hey, how is this, how do I secure this using my, um, you know, uh, my, my, my old Jenkins setup that's all manual running in a data center. Like, sorry, we're not, you know, we're the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We're not going to describe that. What we will do is we will be able to say, hey, here's how you can use these cloud native tools, blah, 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 to still build some of these older artifacts, but we're still focused on stuff like building of containers, building of, um, uh, you know, things that would fit into OCI, whether, you know, any sort of blob, things that can fit into, um, you know, cloud native use cases. So, yeah, I get that that's the cloud native um, focus, but you keep bringing up SolarWinds and I would say SolarWinds is not a cloud native pattern. So, well, uh, you know, you when I watched the KubeCon, oh. um, I did watch it and I have to go watch it again, but they are distributing uh, software to remote agents and remote systems. Um, and I don't know if it's all through Kubernetes, but I have to go watch it again to see what they're trying to do to fix it with the Tekton oh. pipelines. Yeah, so it should be worth noting, we don't get into distribution that much in the document. We are focused more on the building of the thing. Mm -hmm. um, now we do have a couple of notes about distribution of artifacts to production environments using admission control in order to validate the attestations and signatures and those sorts of things. But we're actually, saying, at least for now, we're not really focused on that specifically for reasons like that, which is we are saying, hey, look, if you are distributing stuff to remote agents and whatever, 
that is very much on you to validate those things. Um, you know, we, we are not going to get into too much around uh, how you do that today because a lot of the tooling outside the cloud native space just doesn't exist. And so that we're saying, hey, look, you'll have to figure out that on your, your own for now. Um, as time goes on and more tools come out, more vendor things come out, we might be able to make a separate suggestions. But that's kind of the, 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 the way we've been kind of looking at it, right? Which is just like the way I would argue is like the solar wind stuff is building it in a cloud native way, right? Where they're building it on Tecton, which lives on Kubernetes. They're doing all these different things. And then outside of that, they have these artifacts that they can say, hey, look, I have all this sort of stuff. Now, when I go and distribute that artifact, I still need to do certain things in order to make sure that is distributed securely. That yes, the thing that I that that is now on my customer servers has the same hash as the thing I actually built. There's still stuff that you need to do on that front. Um, it's a little easier in cloud native, but there's probably patterns and practices you could use outside of that. But at least for now, it's outside the scope of what we were doing. Okay. Yeah, I um, I think that's a difficult concept for to understand when you're talking. I think the, the thing that I grapple with is the using Kubernetes for uh, running workloads, right? And then you have um, Kubernetes for building software uh, with ephemeral nodes and things like that. So maybe that's where it gets a little confusing on what the factor software secure software factory pattern is trying to. Um, cover. Sure. So um, we, can, we can go into that, I think, a little bit more um, offline, uh, if you want. I'm, I'm available. Uh, I think the main thing is, uh, you know, the this is sort of uh, an evolution of multiple sort of documents throughout the CNCF um, as well from like the, you know, the cloud native um, security best practices and then the cloud native um, uh, supply chain security white paper best practices white paper. And then this is sort of an evolution of all those things to what is the reference architecture. So we are very much focused because we are at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We are very focused around the cloud native space. And so that includes, you know, Internet of Things, you know, it includes, uh, you know, um, whether it's WASM or whatever, as well as containers and, and those sorts of things. And so uh, now with that said, the other thing that actually ties into another topic that we're, we're, we're with another group that we're starting to work with is the Cartographos um, working group and the Cartographos working group we're trying to kind of explain the um, cloud native journey, right? You know, something like if you are like a giant enterprise and you're uh, starting off in your cloud native journey, you're probably not installing service service mesh on day one, right? That's probably not what you're doing. You're doing these, you know, it's a crawl run kind of thing. And we're trying to, we are saying most likely this, the secure software factory is very much also along the lines in that journey that like if you're um you know a massive enterprise and 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 you know you have you're using you know right now you're using a a, 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 a manually set up jenkins and yada yada you're not going to just be able to take the secure software factory and just say cool two weeks later we have a secure software factory you know like there's a lot more things in your you know you'll have to handle in your own internal enterprises and the culture and the processes and the policy in order to eventually then get to the point where you can have both the, the um, cultural maturity as well as the actual technological maturity to sort of deploy something like a secure software factory. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something that I think is, is up for discussion. And we do wanna make, to be clear, we do wanna make this easier over time. The problem is that it just doesn't like, these things are hard today, and it's just something that we have to. Um, uh, we do have to really drive this. Uh, like at the end of the day, when it comes to a lot of these tools like cosine and yada yada, it's like these things are not like they're getting easier every day to use. But this is a lot of these things are not something that you could sort of pick up and just start using tomorrow. It does require a lot of thought, a lot of architectural discussion in in based on the in, in, individual's environment. And uh, so, yeah, I, like the, the, I guess the TLDR of a lot of this is this stuff is still going to take a while. Um, there is a lot of environments today that 
it's just, it is hard to set up. It's going to be hard to manage and you're going to have to do a lot to sort of drive it to sort of a, a completion there, right? Like, so I spoke to some of the, you know, solar winds folks about, Hey, how many people, you know, how hard was this? And yeah, yeah. And they said, well, when this was the number one priority for six months and, you know, you've, you've testified before Congress uh, that you're going to do the thing, um, it, it, you know, you do whatever you need to do to get it done. I recognize for a lot of other companies, that's maybe not going to be the case. So um, yeah. Uh, so, so there's, there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be done on that front. And I, I think it's definitely in the months to years perspective to get, you know, anybody to just kind of like, like, you know, you know, it's like, Hey, I, I, we're, we're a random, you know, bank or whatever. Hey, how, how can we adopt this? It's going to take a while. You're not adding anything. I think you're, you're spot on. Yeah. And it, it, to be clear, I think this is a thing that, that came out of the, uh, the supply chain security con day um, as well, which was this is a hard problem um, that a lot of folks do want that sort of thing. Like, hey, I have a Jenkins. How do I just feed this into my Jenkins? And you're like, well, actually, you just you can't. This is this is very much like a shift. Like before, we were doing a lot of stuff with monoliths. We're saying monoliths aren't going to cut it anymore. So we're, we, you know, not saying everything is, is microservices, but we've broken stuff down. Um, the same thing, it goes with a lot of different things. Like, you know, there was a lot of old patterns that have gone away because the new way we do things is just, it's incompatible. It's the same way here. Like a lot of this supply chain security stuff is going to take, um, it's going to take some time. It's going to take uh, a lot of effort to make boring um, but the plan is to spend the, that time to try and make it boring. Right. Um, the next thing, uh, so that was one of the topics there, right? So next steps, right? Um, if there's other folks who have other ideas of who else we should be talking to, um, would love to know. I have listed Sol the open SSF scorecard folks, because we can probably integrate some of those things together. Um, the Cardafos working group, uh, also one of the things that was brought up uh, in the previous hour was uh, the, the confidential computing consortium. Like we want to eventually start doing stuff like rooting the trust in hardware, uh, using stuff like TPM to validate some stuff and so on and so forth. Uh, so we wanna kind of start talking to them to see how we can start collaborating and interacting and showing what some of the issues are going to be with getting VTPM and those sorts of things in, in containers and also VPM in, in other mechanisms as well. Uh, and then I wanted to just sort of bring up again, the sort of the secure software factory demo code that we are going to be putting out there as eventually the prototype implementation. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here in a second. Uh, I'll just briefly, I mean, I fully agreed with the confidential computing consortium. I think it's it's really good to start working to, with them. Just just to remind everybody that there is a CNCF project uh, that roots hardware that roots trust in hardware TPMs. It's Keylime. Uh, it's currently in sandbox. Hopefully soon in incubation. Um, well, you know, one of these days. But um, yeah, they, they, this is already something we have inside the CNCF. So, but not saying that at all to say let's not talk to the uh, to the confidential computing consortium because I think that's a great idea too. Oh yeah, yeah, and and to be clear, yeah, I, I think Keylime is great. I know that uh, it's a couple of months since I've had to um, talk to any of those folks. Do you know if there's any movement on the VTPM space? Because I know there was some concerns about like, hey, we can run TPM on the nodes and do some stuff on end, but we're we're having some issues getting them to run in actually the workload containers themselves. Yeah, I nested nested um, quotes TPM quotes were tri were hard. I don't think it's solved yet. I think it's it's a bit further down the track on the on the roadmap. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm working with Michael actually, Michael Peters, who's currently the uh, project leader for the thing on their annual review. So um, that's the latest news as far as I know. I will double check with him, Joe. There's, I will double check with him just to make sure. All right, cool. Yeah. So this um, is a big problem. I see a lot. Yeah, the TPM work on different chipsets. Um, the 
Spire has that TPM node attestation plugin. How is this keyline component different? So I don't know this the Spiffy and Spire stuff very well uh, with, with regards to TPM, but on the keyline side, um, what it does is essentially it 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 has a third it uses a third party to basically at att attest. So you have a you have basically sorry not explaining it very well. Um, you have a verifier uh, that will check nodes by requesting that they send. Um, quotes that are signed by the TPM to show that yeah. basically they went through the boot process without any issues. And one of the nice things that Keyline does is that once all of that's happened, there are mechanisms to conditionally release uh, you know, payloads um, to good nodes. So once a node has been brought up properly, for instance, you can give them a decryption key to decrypt something that is in their their um, image of the OS they loaded, and then they can have access to further secrets that will you know, enable them to join a group or something. And and on the other hand, it does another nice thing, which is to um, to use the, the Linux subsystem, the IMA subsystem, the uh, integrity management. So mm -hmm. it'll check a list uh, of good files that is known, like you know, in a in a in an allow list, and any of these files that would change um, hash essentially on on disk would then automatically make the node uh, go to failed, and the node could okay. be removed from a pool or stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah, I hadn't seen this project, so I'll have to go look into it. One more to add to the list, but yeah, yeah. it's cool. It is quite cool. <laughs> uh, cool. So, um, yeah, so so uh, one of the other things I um, wanted to bring up is we do have this uh, prototype implementation. Um, once again, this is something that came from my team and my, my by you know looks that I've been working with on on this that we had sort of written up for some demos. Uh, all of our code was sort of based on obviously a lot of the work that other folks had done, and now that um, enough people had sort of seen it and said, "Oh wow, you you actually took the reference architecture and just sort of started um, moving," you know, actually getting all the pieces together and, and so on. Uh, I think the next step. Um, is going to be okay. We're we're already in discussions on getting this uh, brought into the CNCF either as a project or as a repo or the the security working group or whatever it is. But we do want to make we do want to turn this into an actual um, project that is tying those things together. Uh, to you know, um, the idea being that at some point in the future we would love to have a one click. You know, we have deployed you a secure software factory that you can feed in your code, and the output is, you know, uh, artifacts that have a salsa attestation, and and we believe to be, um, you know, authentic. We believe to have high a level of integrity, and and all that good stuff. Um, now, with that said, right, this is very much demo code. It was very much POC code, specifically for the supply chain security talk that we had given. Um, but moving forward, we want to now main, make this into an actual thing. So in the next couple of days, we're sort of reorganizing a lot of this sort of stuff, but we want folks to kind of come in. Um, we want folks to, uh, uh, we, we want folks to come in, you know, add issues, test it out. Yada, yada, feel free to kind of poke around with it. Um, if you have the time and, and, and so on, uh, but yeah, we're, we're, you know, Probably in the coming weeks, we're going to be uh, starting to, you know, clean this up. A lot. Or sorry, I should say, in the next couple of days, we're cleaning this up a lot. And then in the, you know, moving forward, we're going to have something that, you know, stalls all the tools that would we would consider part of this reference implementation. We're going to start having uh, tests to show that, like, yeah, well, here's an automated test pipeline that shows what a bad example looks like, right? And here's how here's the pipeline and how you would have to structure in order to do the right things. And here's a pipeline that shows, you know, here's an artifact that it would build, but like it didn't sign it. Why does it not sign it? Because, well, it tried to do something bad and, you know, the, it, the system caught it, those sorts of things. And then after that, we'll obviously create new features and so on and so forth. Now, the thing, you know, just to be clear here is that, you know, a lot of the tools and whatever that's used in here are just the tools that we were just most familiar with uh in already so this is not saying like this is an endorsement of like these specific tools in these specific ways this is just like hey we worked on this stuff we were able to get it working with these tools if there are other tools that we want to use we can definitely include those as sort of 
options in the secure software factory. The idea being that, you know, there could be multiple different, um, you know, pipelines and pipeline frameworks. There's multiple different, um, you know, like orchestration engines and so on. Questions, comments on that front? I think it's a great idea. Yeah, that's that's fine. I saw that at the top of the document, it, meant, it mentions alternative CI CD pipelines, but you in the discussion today, you were mentioning those are all outdated. Um, how is that, um, I guess, a, approach if uh, if Jenkins, GitHub, Circle CI, all those other pipelines are outdated? Um, is that the concept that we have to abandon those? No, not necessarily. So, so once again, I think it's it's as described in the Secure Software Factory factory reference architecture. Um, if you can follow the patterns as described in the secure software factory reference architecture, you have a secure software factory. So if you can get those things running, for example, with Jenkins, you have a secure software factory. Um, in particular, the cloud native thing, right, is, is just what we're kind of a little bit more focused on. But if, you're, um, if you can build a uh, supply chain that includes, like, let's say using Jenkins, that uses ephemeral infrastructure, that everything that pipelines are 100% defined as code um, and all of those sort of other things that we sort of define in this document, then you could use whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, the thing that we've, the, the reason why we're focusing on some of the stuff like let's say Tecton, for example, is because um, one, two, a couple of reasons. One is that it's part of the group that, you know, we are uh, associated with. And then the other reason is um, it just so happens to make it easy at least from our perspective, the authors of the paper. Are you saying that using Tecton gets you to tier two? Is that what you're saying? It doesn't, or I, how is that I'm not concept? Sure. Um, well, what do you mean by tier two? Well, the salsa levels. I'm just trying to understand what components are critical to the model, I guess. Well, well, so so salsa is just a um, it's a framework that says if you do certain things and you can attest to those things, then you have a certain like level of maturity, right? So as an example, right, if you are are following, and to be clear, this is the the conversation we're going to be having with the salsa team to say, hey, what level does the reference architecture sort of do? Because because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, once again, it's not a specific tool. That's the thing. It's what you are doing with the tools that um, allows you to do this sort of thing, right? So as an example, um, I believe there's a thing in there around two-person code review, right? So lots of, uh, what I would say is most Git repos out there, whether it's GitHub or whatever, can support two-person code reviews. It's actually a config level requirement. Right, that that forces you, you know, that that does that. So, is, if you are following the best practices around, yes, we have two-person code review, and here is the configuration sh showing that we have two-person code review. Right? right, we are attesting that that configuration is good enough as proof or whatever. Then you know that hits that salsa requirement. Um, but there's nothing in the specific tools per se that stop you from hitting any particular salsa requirement, just that it's certain tools just make it easier, right? Like if you have a manual Jenkins and yada, yada, it's just not gonna work. That doesn't mean Jenkins itself can't have it work. It's just the way you're using Jenkins means that you're not following the architecture, you're not following, um, you know, salsa. I think, I think one thing I guess one suggestion, I'm looking at the issues on secure software factory. So I think you guys have covered most of what I was thinking of, but, but one thing I think that would help is um, like calling out where things are kind of like very tightly integrated, like currently like in Toto and Tecton chains are kind of uh, like one-to-one, -one. like I'm, I'm not personally, I'm not aware of like 
alternatives there. Um, so that may have been, that might be where you were going, Alan, where like views in total and then without tecton chains, I'm not sure if there's a, <laughs> there's something that can kind of meet that bar yet. It's not that it's always going to be that way. Uh, so a lot of this is is called out in, in the document. Um, so, so I recommend reading through the reference architecture, um, also as well as the the uh, the the best practices white paper. Oh yeah, I I mean in the just in the in the demo, right? If it were if we're trying to flesh out the secure software factory demo, that repo, I agree, it's in the reference oh, okay. architecture. Yeah. But you know, as as you know, as someone's trying to spin up the software factory, right? And then they want to try to you know switch out one part or another, uh, it would be helpful for that to be explicit. Yep, uh, so it should be called at, out at least in the reference implementation or the pro, uh, prototype implementation um, part of the uh, secure software factory document. But yeah, you know, and also, you know, once again, looking for contributors to it. So if, if you have thoughts around it, feel free to open up a GitHub issue or open up a PR and we can start taking a look at it. Yeah, it's the first I've seen this, so definitely take a closer look. Cool. Uh, is there um, any other questions, comments, thoughts about anything moving forward with, uh, you know, the, the work on the final, you know, finalizing the draft or anything regarding the reference implementation or sorry, the, you know, prototype implementation or anything regarding um, uh, just any of the, the, the work moving forward for the uh, supply chain working group? So there's just this concept that we have the OS platform, we have the applications that are running on it for IoT products. And um, maybe Keyline can attest to the node, but when you're when you're developing the OS that's running on your hardware, we're we're mostly hard, I'm on, on the hardware side. When you're developing the OS and you have to make sure the OS is not compromised. Um, I'm just trying to get my head around how the salsa framework can help. Because um, you, you know you, you you have all the components in that OS that you're you're pulling in from other areas. Some of them you're custom making, and I think that's a little bit hard for me to see the the vision yet, but. Uh, I'm, I'm still learning. I just started in like July, so <laughs> like trying to absorb as much as I can. Um, so sometimes I talk wrong about the components, but that's what oh, we're no trying problem. to get is to get the get the stack right so that when we have our software running on some network gear, it's certain. But you know, we guarantee it's not been compromised either from the app layer or the OS layer. Yeah. And so on that front, we do get a little bit into, for example, how you look at the OS, right? Because because at the end of the day, and, and this is where some of the other sort of books and papers come into play as well, just in, in the community of like, you know, what is your bottom turtle, right? You know, because also at the same mm -hmm. time, you could just as easily say, how are we guaranteeing that the literal PCBs in your hardware have not been compromised? And that, you know, like that there aren't, you know, somebody hasn't come in to, you know, the chip fab and they're putting back doors in the hardware. You know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff across the board that, that needs to be thought of. We're focused on a certain layer, but um, I think the same sort of practices probably sort of make sense. And then also sort of moving forward, we would love to get, you know, additional input from folks like yourself on like, hey, here we're very much focused on software and these sorts of things, here's how you think about it from an IOT perspective, or here's how you think about it from a serverless perspective. And, you know, here are some things and we can sort of um, kind of continue to sort of evolve the document 
as, as time goes on as well. Now, from salsa perspective, uh, just real quickly, the only real thing that, that salsa, you know, salsa is just any sort of artifact. Yeah. So if you're talking about the software that's running on that system, all yeah. it's saying is the, that this artifact has gone through these sorts of um, things against it. So as an example, we have validated that it's a reproducible artifact by running it on two separate machines and getting the same hashes. And those two machines have attested to that, right? Um, you know, and, and those sorts of things then get associated with that artifact. And you can say, okay, cool. When I distribute that artifact, I'm going to go and validate those attestations and say, yep, it, it hit all those attestations. So we believe it to be a salsa for artifact. And our system is going to say that, you know, we're going to deploy that salsa for, for artifact or whatever it is. Okay. I, I think to your point, Alan, I mean, like something like Kilime is only part of an answer. It's, it's, does, it's, I don't think it was ever intended to be the whole answer. It's just, it adds layers to, to your capacity to trust what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, we, we, it helps say, you know, we think it's at, at least this, this good state, uh, but there's still a lot of other questions that come in. And, you know, for instance, you were saying, you know, you're pulling in code from, from elsewhere, like Keyline will do very little about that. It'll just tell you the node on which you're running is extremely likely to be running the OS you think it's running. But, you know, and if files change on that node, we can detect it and then, but you, you know, for instance, you can't do something like fix the fix the node if you detect a change because as soon as you can see there's something that's been compromised on the node you have to assume the whole node is compromised and all that keylime can do is tell for instance all the other machines don't trust that node or don't talk to that node anymore or don't send that node any data you know that sort of stuff um so even that you know it's not it's not as nice as being able to sort of go back and fix it for instance you sort of have to assume the node is is out but anyway yeah it's it's I, the more I'm seeing. You were saying, you know, you've been looking at this since July, and that's probably about the same time, a bit, maybe a few months longer for me, but you know, really similar. And it looks a lot to me like the answer is going to lie in, in combining uh, various projects and approaches and tools. And it, it goes to what you know Michael was saying, which is, you know, this is complicated. And it's not like a turnkey solution. We there are a lot of things to put together. So. I do like the pattern, uh, the femoral nodes and everything. So it's uh, pretty exciting stuff. So I definitely uh, appreciate all the work. Just trying to put my head around it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think once again, to just sort of sum up some of this is we recognize it's hard and it's not the sort of thing like, you know, it, it's not like a, behind me, right? The, the gang of four software architecture book, right? Which is like, there are very clearly, you know, there's a bunch of different patterns. There's very rarely a new sort of like big software architecture pattern that, that comes out. Um, but when it comes to, you know, secure supply chain stuff, this is not exactly new. The, the, there have been issues about this in the past, but it hasn't been as big of a deal until recently where the number of attacks has increased and the complexity of our environments continues to increase where it's like, you know, what used to be, oh yeah, I have a few dependencies is now I have my list of transitive dependencies is potentially hundreds, if not thousands of things. And okay, how do we reason about it? How do we secure around it? It's going to be a, it's, it is a hard thing to, to, to manage. And because of that, it's like, even this, this reference architecture we're talking about, you know, we want to make sure that we caveat it with, look, this is still a very, very evolving space. This is what we think should get done we think this sort of thing helps us secure it and so on and so forth. But recognize that this isn't, as was mentioned, this isn't a turnkey solution and it probably won't be a turnkey solution for a while. But also down to, you know, chat, uh, you know, feel free to ping me um, also in the Slack. There's a lot of other folks in the Slack for the working group who probably have additional thoughts and, and whatnot. And, and I'm sure sort of in moving forward, we would love to work with you and anybody else you think who can help us out from the sort of internet of things, hardware sort of space on, you know, hey, how do we secure stuff that's running in firmware? Or how do we, you know, secure stuff that's running the software on these individual devices? I'm sure like moving forward, we'd love to have some of those conversations as well. Because that's a space that at least for myself, outside of just the generic, here's how you secure an artifact. 
Um, I'm not sure how we would approach that problem for hardware. I'm not an expert in any of that. Yeah, I uh, like to know. I think I think like to try to know um, as much as possible, but um, there's just so much moving. Um, so, is the software so secure software factory GitHub site? Is that meant to be then like a drop in place, like implementation of the document? Um, so this, so once again, this will probably become a CNCF repo at some point. Mm -hmm. The idea right now is to show a prototype implementation. Like it will work on very trivial sorts of use cases um, and show you like, this is the sort of thing you'll probably have to do. There's a whole lot of stuff that needs to be sorted out. Um, and once again, you're not going to get anything at least out of the box uh, for, for a while, right? Because a lot of this is coming down to things like, you know, this, the, everything we're talking about, even in the document, certain assumptions that are sort of outlined in the document, like your Kubernetes is following the hardening best practices that the CNCF has described. Mm -hmm. And that is a list of things that you'll have to consider as well, right? Like we we're assuming, right, that, you know, based in what we've described in the document, you are not going to have, um, you're not going to have a, uh, like, you're not just going to give developers admin access to your Kubernetes. If you are, this isn't going to work. Um, so there's a lot of those things that are described as well. And it is a very complicated space. So it's not the sort of thing that's just super simple and super easy to just kind of throw in there. Um, so it is going to take a while and it's going to take a long time to sort of grok. Now, the idea here is that this prototype implementation is still something that you can just kind of spin up, see how it works. Like the, the prototype implementation will do things like it will validate that the secure software factory itself is using signed images, right? So that, you know, if somebody were to replace the tecton image with a bad tecton image, it'll block it. Um, it will validate that you know, it will sign your artifacts. So assuming you've gone through, you know, you've de de developed a pipeline that matches the, the standard, it will sign the artifact as the, the, the resultant artifact. Um, it will do a few other things like uh, it has a POC element of, hey, here's a prod namespace where we're doing admission control that validates salsa attestations. Now, once again, that doesn't necessarily work for you, deploying it to Internet of Things devices, but it's still just sort of, you know, once again, it's it's the sort of POC, that demo thing. Long term, this might be one day an open source tool that would be a drop-in replacement that would be production, but the same way that a lot of these CNCF tools would be sandbox and incubating and so on and so forth, I imagine it would probably take, you know, over a year to get it to a point where we'd say, oh, this is a something that we feel is hardened for a production release. Yeah, I was just reviewing it. <clears throat> Looks like there's a lot of good stuff in there. Yep. And once again, we're, we're going to be refactoring this in the next two days to kind of make it very clear, like, hey, here's how to just spin up a mini cube with the tools installed and configured in a certain way. And you can write your pipeline over here and, you know, you can run that pipeline and just start testing it out. And what you should see is stuff like if your are not signed, it won't run them. If you're, you know, and you'll just have to be clear about what signatures you trust and so on, or sorry, what keys you trust and so on. I need to hop over to the next meeting, but feel free to ping me on Slack. And if you, if you had other questions and whatever else uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, ping me. Yeah, thanks. Yep.